Hello. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear me this time. So I did just try doing the stream where I actually finished knitting the top of this Yoda and somebody really kindly pointed out that they couldn't hear me. <laughs> so we're going to try again. Uh, so luckily I didn't get very far into knitting this chart. So once again, mute my phone. <laughs> Oh, absolute nightmare. Mute. Um, so yeah, we're going to be knitting the Rebel Alliance symbol <laughs> on stream. And I've cast on 39 stitches plus four. So the chart is up on my blog if you want it. <laughs> I'm absolutely fuming with myself. I think it's because I updated my OBS and I don't know why I didn't realise that the little um, microphone symbol wasn't bouncing up and down. But yeah, I've not actually lost any progress. You're with me from the start because I was actually just finishing off knitting that Yoda chart. I hadn't um, finished the six rows of um, plain stocking it before before and after the chart so I was just finishing that off um, I'm hoping it is now like 7 30 but I'm hoping I've got time to actually finish this chart and do some sewing in of the um, tail ends because there's lots of tail ends on this chart to finish off but yeah, luckily this is a uh, really simple, easy chart. There is another chart that I've got like this one in the Star Wars collection called the Galactic Alliance chart? Galactic Empire chart. And that one, even though it's still just two colours, God, it looks difficult. <laughs> It looks so tricky to knit. So I'm really hoping it's not actually um, as hard as it looks. I'm sure it won't be, but hey, nothing can be as hard as knitting the word Star Wars with a border. I'm just not made for this streaming business yeah just before um, I found out that I wasn't actually chatting with you um, I'd moved the camera further down so it's in the webcam footage but I do like how clear it is appearing um, because it's so much more close to the knitting and I think that's the main thing that you can actually see what I'm knitting so I'm going to leave it where it is and maybe eventually I'll get a super high def camera that I can have really high up and you'll still be able to see exactly what I'm doing without compromising the quality of the image that would be ideal I would have been really mad if I'd knit, started knitting the picture and no sound had been on that whole time. <laughs> but as it is, it's worked out quite, quite fine. I think I've still got the message from the person that let me know. They've started following me, I think, as well. If that's you. 
Thank you. Shy Ray Crochets. Shy Ray. You know what? All my um, backup plans failed me because I've even got a Twitch chat that reads things out loud to me, reads the chat out loud, and the message didn't even flow through to that, so, because I'm really bad at knitting and paying attention to the chat. So I have the chat bot tell, like, read out messages from people, and it didn't do it. <laughs> I'm furious. There was no reason for it not to either, so. Focus. I think this one's going to be quite an easy chart to do um, because there's not too many ends to sew in, uh, like joining, sorry. Um, it's pretty much a solid block of red for several lines. So, I'm, and it's symmetrical, <laughs> which is always a plus when you're working from a chart. A lot of the charts I design on my website, they've not got um, symmetry, which a lot of the time you don't actually want symmetry in pictures. Um, it kind of makes the characters look cuter. Um, Incy Wincy Spider is a good example of this. I've got a little spider chart and he's like not a ball with eight legs. Um, he's got some really cute googly eyes and I think if I'd made him symmetrical it would have been easier to knit he wouldn't have looked anywhere near as um, cute but that's why I like sometimes doing multiple versions of the, um, the same thing um, an example of that would be my snowman charts i've got two snowmen one's just called snowman um before i realized i can do many versions of a snowman so the second one i called jingles because it just sounds scary um but he's symmetrical and i think the other snowman might look super cute but I think it was putting people off actually knitting the image because they couldn't figure out how to add his scarf. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's why I've done a very simple, symmetrical version and he's got a really nice top hat. Need to wind off some blue from this ball because I've I've got another ball of um, this blue, but it's not out. It's in the box on top of the shelf. So I'm actually dead surprised how many charts the one ball of blue seems to be able to knit because I've been using the same ball of blue for the past four charts. This is the fifth one it's done and it's practically still a full ball and that is fab. Oh, 
Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. The way I count, for anybody new, is this little V at the very bottom. Can you see it? This one. That does not count. <laughs> that is the cast on, so you have to go one up. One, two, three, four, five, and then the six on the needle. But if you count from the back, you're going to be counting the, I call them the ends. So the ones that go this way. So you've got ones that I use connected to an end because knitting is a wave like this. So you're counting the tops of the waves and you count all of the tops. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And you don't count that one because you've actually included the top of the cast on. And that's how you can count the bumps. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And that works for stocking stitch. It doesn't quite work for garter stitch. Okay, so I'm using, this is my favorite type of yarn because it's so soft. And that's Snuggly DK. It's just so soft. That's what this is made out of. This is the four ply version of their yarn. And oh, it's lush. <laughs> you know, for basic acrylic yarn, it's it's my favourite. Unless it's got sparkles in it, and then that's my favourite. Okay, I need to figure out how many blues I need. So this chart has, let me get up my calculator, it has 178 stitches, 74 stitches of red. So I'm going to just show you. Divide it by 80 and that means I need 10 strands of red because I know I can knit about 80 stitches with one strand of red or any wool. So the fact that I need 10 probably means I need, if I show you the strand plan, this bottom section over here, that's the majority of the red. So I'm probably going to need about eight strands of red in just that one section. And the last two strands will be amongst the other uh, top, uh, top left corner sections. Um, so I'm going to measure out eight because I'd sooner have more than I need than less than I want. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whoa. And then I'm going to wrap this into a bobbin. I don't like using bobbins, but this is such a big um, amount of yarn that I am going to wrap it into a bobbin. If it was just one or two strands, I'd just leave it loose. But yeah, this is how I actually do my bobbins. Because I don't like making bobbins. Okay, so I've just left a long length. So I wrapped it around my hand and then twist it into a figure of eight, put my fingers through and then if I can I'll grab it there we go <laughs> I should have probably wrapped it around my hand a lot looser but I didn't so I want to do the same with the blue I've got this tiny bit of blue I'm going to save that Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and whoop, nine, ten. So same again. I'm gonna wrap it around my hand. I'm gonna make it a lot looser this time. So make my fingers wide. So I can wrap. 
There we go. This works a lot better when you don't have so much wool. But that'll do. Okay. So, let's zoom in. I'm going to hide my layers. So we can see that we need to start on the 17th stitch so I'm going to work up to the 16th stitch so two on the end one two and then count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, ah, 16. Just taking the 16th one off. <laughs> so lay the yarn, lay your contrast yarn over your working yarn and then knit the 16th stitch, like so. So that just traps that yarn at the back. And now I can start knitting with that yarn. So up to stitch 23, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Now we do the same for the other side of the red. Grab our next piece of contrast yarn, lay it over the working yarn, just tightening it up, pinching it to the back with my fingers. And then knit the last stitch, stitch 23, and now I can pick up the contrast yarn. So when we come back the other way, we won't have to do that process on the stitch before. Um, I just like to do it on my foundation row so that those ends are trapped. Because if you don't trap them, they leave a little bit of a hole. And the cat out um the hole does disappear as soon as you sew in your ends after you've finished knitting but while you're knitting it can throw your tension off like crazy and it can get in your head a little bit and make you think oh that doesn't look right that's wrong what have i done and it's just because nobody tells you to tie in the ends so you can see mine are trapped there's no holes because I just lapped it over on the stitch before. So I've twisted my working needle clockwise. So when I get to the other end, I need to twist it counterclockwise and that'll stop my yarn ends from getting twisted up. Whether I remember that is another question. So let's just move the ruler up. I should have made the ruler a different colour today. Let's do it. That's a nice colour. Um, I tend to use red as my ruler colour, but if, actually, it doesn't look as clear on stream. Excuse arms. Green's really punchy. Um, if there's a lot of red in the picture then using red as my ruler isn't going to help keep me in line so this is three stitches before my last red stitch so rather than counting on every row I'll just keep my eye on my knitting so I'll just knit up to these three stitches Not 
that counting is a problem. Here we go. If you want to count, you can count. So when you need to start a new your next colour, you put your working yarn over your next yarn and then you can just start knitting with it. And that's how you cross your ends. It's that easy. So I've got only one bobbin to deal with. And sometimes I actually prefer to have loads of um, colours versus having one super large bobbin because these bobbins they don't half get in the way <laughs> okay so here's another color change so the colors coming from back here this time so I'll just pick it up make sure it goes over the top of the red not underneath and then you just start working with it The reason that we didn't have to do some sort of crazy wrap is it's just because the blue was further back than the red. Uh, meaning you knitted over the blue strand with the red strand. Counterclockwise. I nearly didn't remember. And honestly, it does not seem to have made a difference. There we go. Because <laughs> the red is going to be getting in the way the whole time. Um, before I carry on, I'm going to wrap this piece of the tail. This is a better example of how that twist is supposed to work. See how nice and loose it is? Unless you wrap it around your arm. <laughs> a billion times and make the wool too tight but that's how it's supposed to work there we go let's pull on the tails that's first couple of rows done super good oh, move my ruler up This is two stitches before red, right there. See how there's two stitches on my needle before the red? And then red underneath the blue. And then a pinch with my finger just so that the other yarn doesn't try and escape. Let yourself in, Wheatley. It's Wheatley's birthday today. <laughs> She's ten. Aren't you? Are you a big girl? Are you a big girl? She's a big girl who's not eaten. Forgot that she's not had a dinner yet. She did not get me up to feed her. Wheatley's dead good. Um, she'll only ask for food when she's actually hungry. Unless it's my food. <laughs> if I'm eating, she wants my food. She's like, give me your chicken. Give me your mash. She'll eat anything. Except when it's her own food. Jump up then. Good girl. Come lie down here. Do you want to lie down on here? You think she'd want to sleep on this fluffy blanket, but she just doesn't. Yes. Pretty lady. 
You big girl. She's gone sleeping off camera. What a pest. <laughs> So because this picture is actually symmetrical, I'm not going to get too worried about keeping my eye on the other side because I know if it's too across on this side, it's, it's too over on that side. So I don't have to do the keep moving it left and right to see both sides of the image, which is nice. So this is two before red. It's been a while since I've worked with bobbins and I now remember why I don't like them. It's already getting on my nerves. <laughs> I'm starting to think I should have just done like three strands of um, length rather than eight but I could just undo it now or split it in half even do four Two more. One. Oh. One. Two. So the yarn I'm using for the red is a different brand than the yarn I'm using for the blue. And the blue is so much thicker feeling than the red. They both knit to the same tension, but it does feel thicker. And I'm pretty sure they're both 100% acrylic. So I don't know what the reason for that is. <sighs> I can see why people who just use bobbins think intarsia is the worst because <laughs> it is a lot more tedious come on there we go now it's one over I like it when it starts um, traveling increasing by one because it means the back of the image looks really clean so the knit rows are actually harder to do than the purl rows and that's because the yarn being crossed over is happening on the purl rows on the back of the work which is the purl side and you can't actually see what you're doing picking up your yarn if you're doing it on the knit side so just remember you pick up your new colour under the yarn you just use and that locks it in place knit one extra pick up the blue I'm going to try and not move the red around too much, see if there's a technique I can provide you with. But I think because you always cross 
the yarn you just used on over the yarn you're going to use. There's not really a way to avoid the yarn twisting up. So can't believe how different this wool feels. It definitely feels like a four ply. What's it knit to? 2822. They knit to the exact same tension. It feels so much thinner. If I was just using this brand of wool, I wouldn't notice the difference, but it's because I'm mixing them together. Um, sometimes when you mix brands together, it can create a nice sort of depth to your image um, because there could be a textural difference that you are trying to achieve. So if this blanket was for me, the main shade would all be sparkly. I'd get, get my hands on some of that twinkle yarn that usually appears everywhere at Christmas and the background would all be sparkly. Probably sparkly black. <laughs> or maybe like it says on the um, chart to use. Just think, sparkly navy for this blanket would look amazing because of it being space themed. Really? What are you doing? She looks like she's sulking in the corner. <laughs> okay. So yeah, the um, the red is going to get twisted up. I don't think there's anything we can do about that. Apart from cut it half the length and then I would not be worried about it. I'll show you that when I get further up and introduce the new yarns. If your yarn ends are short enough, you don't ha actually need to unwrap them, but you will need to sew in more ends. So it's like, do you want to mess around on moving your um, bobbins around or would you just sooner spend the time sewing in your ends? Most of the time I'd sooner spend the time sewing in my ends but because this is only two colours I don't mind doing it for two. I would not be doing this if this was a massive blanket. Um, you know say I had big squares of um, colour all across the bottom of a jumper or something. Probably just sewing the ends. I think it'd be worth the time on that side of things versus undoing and moving all my bobbins around. They're quite popular at the moment, them sweaters where you've got squares, patches of colour across the bottom and all the way up. so bright red on the camera it's not as bright red in real life <laughs> oh move my ruler so this is saying it's the seventh row and it's definitely not one two three four five six seven i've just knitted the seventh row If it's saying I'm on the seventh row, which is an odd number, it means that's supposed to be a knit row. So if I'm on a pearl row, it means my ruler's not in the right place. And it's just because it's so easy to um, follow the chart at this point. Charts like this are really nice, where you've just got some nice basic rows before you get into the like taxing part of the chart um, so love hearts are like this where you've just got 
a progressively larger point and then when you get to the very top of the love heart you have to figure out how you're going to knit the bumps but even that's not hard it's just a decision making point really diamonds are very easy to knit squares are very easy to knit Circles are very easy to knit. I can't think why you just want circles. A, a circle, should I say, in the middle of a design. <laughs> Pardon. Make sure I'm unwrapping my wool. When you twist, if your blue strands are twisted over each other like that, creating that X, you need to make sure you unwrap the direction that it untwists that point. I'm not going to worry about the thread anymore, I'm just going to leave it where it is. Oh, didn't move my ruler. <laughs> if you don't want to do this digitally moving a ruler up and down or I sometimes use MS Paint and just cross the row that I've just done off with a line um, but if you want to do this physically um, you can print off the chart and then you can put them in Ziploc bags or in those um, plastic folder um, sleeves and then you can get a sharpie and cross off the rows like that and that way you can then use hairspray to get the sharpie off the plastic and reuse the plastic. You could also just print it off and cross it off on a piece of paper if you didn't want to save the print. You know, if you weren't being precious about it, that's fine. But that technique I've just said about using the plastic bag is really good when you've uh, bought a physical pattern and you don't want to scribble all over that. Because um, the only way around that is just to scan it in so that you've got a, a dirty copy. <laughs> You can keep one nice and clean. Ah, oh, this one's actually at the same point. So I've knitted straight up to the red and now I'm going to not increase and you just work across the row See a hair. <laughs> it's driving me crazy. I could sort of see it just with one eye. So my peripheral 
peripheral. My depth percent perfects my depth perception vision was not working. I know that's not the same with your peripheral per, 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 peripheral vision. God, peripheral vision. That's what I've got. <laughs> I don't remember the last time I had a peripheral, but oh. I wouldn't say no. So bright. Tone down. Maybe I can tone it down. Um filter. Colour correction. Oh, it's a bit better. <laughs> At least you can actually see the stitches now. Kind of. Oh. This is the problem when you're using OBS and digital software. I keep flicking between the two. Uh, programs and then when I go to move the ruler up I'm not actually in the correct software it's a pain in the bum This is an increase in the red row. Let's start the blue. I've not brought my massive bottle of water in with me today. I've not got a lot of my brew left either. This is a mirror row. When I say that, that means it mirrors, it's identical to the row below. anybody else get sleepy doing a knitting it is eight o'clock but I always find when I'm concentrating on things I end up yawning more um, when I was in high school whenever we were in um, IT I'd always yawn in IT no matter what and I couldn't figure out if it was because of the air conditioning um, or if I was just using my brain more because I really liked IT so I had no idea why I was yawning constantly through the lesson <laughs> but the IT guy was just like well <laughs> Mr Robinson sorry yawning through your class I didn't mean it
I loved IT. <laughs> That was the only class that I'd go back and do again. I wouldn't do any of the other ones. All the other classes were useless. <laughs> this is what I mean when I say about twisting your arms up. There you go. We're getting there now. The bobbing of red's not too long. I'm not in a massive mess. Uh, but that bobbing of red, because I've not wrapped it around a piece of card or anything, um, I would be able to undo it quite easily. So, oops. If I've gone and knitted one too many stitches, you just need to put your stick your needle into the stitch below and put it back onto the left needle. Oh, I did it again. <laughs> I'm supposed to be changing to red. Next row is another mirror row, so I won't need to pay attention to that. Just need to copy. This is such a nice, simple knit. <laughs> I've got several Star Wars charts to do, and none of them are easy after this one. This I, I maybe should have saved it for another day when I was feeling really like, but. <laughs> Um, my arm hurts today so I thought let's do something simple um, I'm trying to think I've got a princess layer which is probably quite a simple one compared to the other ones but I can't think any of the other ones are particularly easy. Boba Fett looks dead fun to knit. Uh, but he's got a nice big black outline which makes the picture look really good. But black outlines are a little bit more tedious to include when you're um, in Tarsiering. I always like to knit the outlines well. Because uh, you've got a couple of options for outlines. You can knit it while you're um, knitting the image, like I'm doing now, doing Intarsia. Or you can duplicate stitch the outline once you've finished knitting. But I just find that I spend that much time duplicate stitching that I might as well have just spent that little bit extra time knitting the picture. because the outline's not actually that much more difficult to include because it's not like you've got to strand the uh, outline you're still in tars you're in it you where you colors meet a new color you cross yarn over and you knit it so if it's only one stitch wide it don't make a difference for um, the technique
I'm just wondering if I could do like a photograph time lapse of knitting, but I just don't see the point. <laughs> you know, the knitting is the fun bit, not the row being knitted. Um, having been knitted. I've seen quite a few fun time lapse of knitting though, where um, if they've knitted a yoke and they've got it on them, that's so clever. This is a good point to see if you've been knitting the chart correctly and increasing where you need to. So I've got two stitches before my chart, knit one, and then this one's my gonna be red. So that means that I have done everything correct. Um, so as you can see, when you're comparing it to the actual chart, I've got one blue and then the red. These are my border stitches. Because sometimes when you're not counting which stitch you're up to and making sure that you've got the red stitches exactly where the red stitches are supposed to be, it can throw you off a little bit. You can get a little bit too um, confident in what you're doing and stop paying attention, which if I'm just chatting to you guys while knitting, then I'm not paying attention. Like this side's wrong. <laughs> so I've got four stitches. Why is it wrong? Supposed to be identical. So where did I go wrong? Ugh, I'm not going back. I'm just going to duplicate stitch on this side. Um, I'm going to figure out where I went wrong. So we've got three, two, there see how it's gone up it should have gone across right well this is fine <laughs> um, so I'm going to knit up to in red where I'm supposed to be up to in red so that would be that stitch so then when I've finished, I'll just come back through and duplicate stitch on this edge to make it correct. Debating cutting my yarn at the point where it's wrong and leaving an, a bit long tail so that I can duplicate stitch straight down. But because I'm introducing blue at this point and another strand of red on this side I will have a long tail at that point anyway so I'll be able to thread it over here and fix it so it's not a massive problem and if no one can see it's a mistake it's not a mistake it's fine <laughs> And by figuring out my plan of attack to fix the problem, <laughs> um, it means I've dealt with the situation. Foam. I got given my partner's old phone and I hate it. So I'm going to switch back to my phone, which I also didn't like. But you know, <laughs> at least I didn't pay for the phone. And at least I didn't get rid of my phone. Yeah, the camera on this phone that he's giving me is so good. But 
he's got so many other problems with it that he didn't have when he had it as a phone. So we don't know what's wrong with it and why it's kicking up a fuss for me. I'm just lucky, I guess. <laughs> I'm going to get up to where the blue is getting introduced and then I'm going to go downstairs and make a brew because I'm so thirsty and I didn't bring my big bottle of water up today. Since I started the stream it's approaching an hour since I started it for the second time to finish this bit of a chart and I think to get almost halfway through in an hour is pretty good even if I did make a mistake <laughs> it's only two more rows of mirroring the row below I wonder if I should get the microphone closer to my knitting needle so that you can hear the noise of them clinking together. Is that AMSR? MSN? ASMR? Don't know. <laughs> I don't seem to be able to talk today. Referral, perfect, perfect. When I say the word in my head, I can say it. When I say it out loud, nonsense comes out. Oh, actually. No, my brain's got the same problem my mouth's got. Peripheral. <laughs> per peripheral. I have good peripheral vision. I can see my finger. I wonder if there's somewhere you can go to have your peripheral vision checked. Because I think mine's better than most people's. Yes. Well, that's the end of that row. Um, so I'll just go to a break so that I can get myself another brew and I can feed the cat. She's not asking me to feed her but I won't feel guilty if she does want food. Um, and then the next row we're going to be introducing the blue and the new strand of red. So that'll be fun. I think I'm going to do two strands, two arm spans of red for the um, point and I'm going to do, let me have a look at it before I leave, like a nice heart moon. Um, so yes I've just done that row 
let's move the ruler so you can see I've got a strand of red being added here and then another strand of red over here let's count them two four six eight ten twelve one two three four five six seven eight Um, yeah, I think two will be enough because there's about eight down here and less than eighty up there. Oh, I've probably greatly <laughs> overestimated because I think eight is about this point here based on this being about 24 stitches there we'll see <laughs> okay i'll uh, be right back let's transition out Hello. Okay, I'm back. I've left the tea bag in the mug. <laughs> I'm a disgusting human. Because it's such a big mug, where even if I squeeze the bag out, it's just not strong enough, so I just leave the bag in. Okay, so how many bits of blue do I need? Quite a lot. 
think I need at least two strands in there. It's not too bad because I need to add a new bit of blue further up. Ooh. That cupboard gets left open because the cat sleeps in there. But she's over there in the corner so I'm not worried about trapping her in. This is exactly two strands. That's good. I've put a knot in it. It's very clever like that. There's a strand. Let's get another strand of blue. One, two, and I'm gonna add a bit extra so that I can weave it in. Where's my red? Okay, so I want two strands of red. Oh, that middle strand's not too, too long. One. Two. I've still got to do two. One. Two. Because if it's looking too long, I'll just split it. If, if it's looking too long, I'll split it and use it for the point in the middle. So, yeah, it doesn't make a difference to me having too much yarn at this point. <laughs> okay. So I need to be concentrating on the numbers again on this row. As you can see, my ruler um, has numbers on it. So when I move the ruler up, I can see which... Um, stitch I'm supposed to be in rather than doing that well down here 17 up to 17 my brain don't work like that I need them there <laughs> so make two and then the red starts straight away on this side so one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Take one of my strands of blue, place it on top, eleven, and then you can pick up the blue that you've just added. Two, one, two, pick up a strand of red. This is a fun row, isn't it? <laughs> I like adding loads of different tails on the same row. Fourteen. Oh, eleven. <laughs> no? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. looped it over the red 25 now I can pick up the blue make sure you've left enough of a tail that you can weave in the ends when you're finished 26 27 
28 pick up the red ah and this piece of red I'm actually going to make it a little bit longer sorry about that much so that I can use that tail to go and fix my mistake on the other side <laughs> that's what I'm gonna do or do I want it at the end you know what now I'm gonna make it shorter so my plan is when I get to the tippy top up here if you look at the um, chart and then I'm going to weave in my ends back this way so that it doesn't have a, a like a piece of uh, yarn going across the back it'll be nice and neat down the edge that's what I'm gonna do I'll show you at the end because <laughs> I think that'll just look better So just enough yarn to weave in. I don't need a lot. And then 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, and then my two edge stitches. So that's my foundation row for the blue. Oh, that's good. Oh, that was very good. <laughs> that's what the back looks like. So there was quite a lot of yarn being added, but because they were all um, spread out, that was quite an easy one to do. Um, yeah, liked that one. It gets to me a little bit when it's you've got to cross your yarns over yarns that you've just crossed, <laughs> you know, so if you've got two nuclears next to each other. Which happens quite a lot, but... <laughs> this one's not the case. So, because they're all long tail ends, um, so they're all about two arm spans wide, these one these strands I can just undo as I go. They won't get knotted up. Oh, move my ruler. I already did. So for instance, you can just give the end you're working with a pull and it'll just come undone from the rest of the pack. But you've still got to make sure that you're twisting your needles anti clockwise, clockwise on each row because um, the blue will still get twisted up around itself because I'm using two bobbins of blue so I've got a solid ball and another large oddment on the other side so I could count this but I can see that I need two less stitches of red than I used last time so there's my two stitches of red and now I'm going to switch to blue and you can see I need one extra stitch of blue on the opposite side so one two three four five six and I can switch to this next strand of red up to where the last red is and then I can switch over to my blue I'm a bit paranoid about my microphone now <laughs> uh, I'm not keep checking to make sure it's not um, turned off one two three four five six six blue switch to red and then the reds all the way up to the edge 
it's up to the edge for quite a few rows actually which is nice gives us less to think about Okay, one less on all points in the middle, which is easy to do. The edge is the same. The needle keeps on wrapping itself around the blue bobbin <laughs> on that side. one less there and I need to have one less red on this side so I'll knit an extra stitch One less stitch on the other side. Switch to the blue. Just put a pull of blue. There we go. And then we need one extra blue on this side and one less red. Okay, let's oh, move the ruler the wrong way. Has anybody else had crazy allergies recently? It's like chucking it down and I'm still like completely itchy eyed. This year's been worse than any other year. And I've been inside ten times more <laughs> than normal. So that's saying something. I'm inside all the time anyway. Yeah, when everybody else was moaning about having to be inside and not go near people, I was there like grud. <laughs> that's normal. I knew I wasn't wrong. So one less stitch of red there, and then the red stays the same in the middle. So change to the red. The red's still crazy bright on the picture. It's gone quite dark in my room now. Okay, so switch back to the blue. I need one less red on this side. I don't actually need to move the chart back and forth. I can see what I'm doing but just in case <laughs> so 
that's how you undo your wool you pinch the yarn so that tails can't get through and then you just give it a pull and it just all unravels amazing okay one less stitch of blue and switch to the red and then it's same on the edge I don't know why but I'm really looking forward to it being Friday tomorrow I don't do anything different on a Friday than any other day of the week <laughs> and because Danny's been off um, poorly well it's not been poorly he's just been healing um, from his operation it's not even like I'm looking forward to him being at home because he's at home <laughs> must be a psychological thing from when I did go to work and I did go to uni but now I just work all Friday I work all Saturday I work all Sunday <laughs> I never take time off right this is row 23 and this mirrors the row below on this edge um, so that's good and then the middle only slightly changes so we're copying the reds here and then we're going to work up to the red in the middle knit one extra change to red and then we're going to knit one less There we go, then change to blue, knit that stitch in blue, and then it mirrors on this side, so we're just copying the row below. There we go. And on this row, the pointy bits change, but the middle stays the same for a few rows now. That's nice. We don't have to concentrate on this bit for one, two, three, four, five, six rows. So this row is staying the same. I'll let you know when it changes. <laughs> And like I said, because it's a symmetrical image, straight down the mirror, uh, middle is a mirror on both sides. Um, what I don't need to keep moving the chart back and forth because I can see that it's the same. Whatever happens on this side is happening on the other side. Unless I knit them wrong. <laughs> so knit one less stitch of red there. Need to switch to this blue. See how it's all knotted up? Just pinch and pull and then it's unknotted. <laughs> pinch and pull. Maybe that could be a, a, a catchphrase. The old pinch and pull. <laughs> Sounds like a, a not very nice move to be doing in nightclubs. <laughs> That's not going to be a catchphrase. Pinch and pull. <laughs> so this is the same. This side is one stitch extra of blue. So, oh. 
actually this side that I um, this is the original piece of red that I added in all the way back down there it's doing quite good I do think there should be enough to finish the point but it's like perfect if uh, there is enough to finish the point come on focus there you go the camera was out of focus there and I really thought it was my eyes. Because <laughs> uh, when I went downstairs, I put some moisturiser on. Because I have a bad eye. Um, all the skin around my eye is bad. So I put the moisturiser on and I thought, how does moisturiser like blurred my vision? <laughs> Horrendous. Imagine. Look at that. What's it looking like? looking like I did it wrong in the corner <laughs> hello baby what's up who's oh, sleepy she's ignoring me what's up do you want to come here No? Okay. Focus. Did I move the ruler? No, I did not. So this is the same. This is a m exactly the same row. Ah, oh, love it. So just, if you get to a red, change to red. If you get to a blue, change to blue. This is a good row. Remember to pick up your new strand underneath your working strand. Only on the stitch where you need it. So I need the red. Pick up the red. I need the blue. Pick up the blue. just spasmed you know what I have got arthritis in the bottom of my spine and this is hurting me like right at the top I'm like what's going on there it's like pinching me <laughs> I know when I used to paint when I was younger um, I used to wear a bracelet and I used to get an electric shock up my arm <laughs> from painting so I took the bracelet off and then I sometimes get it from using these metal knitting needles. You going out? Bye bye baby. So I'm wondering whether that pain in my back was actually related to the metal knitting needles. I've got some um, carbon fibre. I think they might be. They feel like plastic. Um, and they're really good needles. But I only have one pair. I'm not made of money. <laughs> Move the row. Okay, so this is the last, the last time this edge stays the same. point starts getting a lot smaller now so knit one two oh. stop getting wrapped up blue three four five five red and then we're going to knit up to the middle because the middle is staying the same This is the same, unwrap my red, this 
roughly is the same. Thank you. And then this is one extra blue here. And this edge is the same. to twist it back so there we go just want it looking like so now this edge is staying the same here and here this is the same and we've just got a lot more tapering happening on these extreme sides. So column number one and column 39, it starts decreasing up. But this is the same in the middle for a couple of rows and now this bit stays the same for a couple of rows. That's quite nice. Decrease one, make one extra blue, knit four red, and then this bit is all the same. When you're working with a chart and you're thinking, Oh, I'm doing something on every single row different, it's nice when you can pay attention to it and think, Well, them stitches are actually not doing anything for about four rows, and I'm only doing something on these side bits and you know you just break it down in your head into reasonable portions and movements but now knitting I pinch the yarn that I was working with last and that just helps keep my tension nice um, when I start working with the next piece of yarn and it's something that I don't actually realise I'm doing only since I've started doing these streams that I've realised that that's going on so at this point I'll grab it with this hand and pinch it to the back of the work so I'll knit four one two three four change to blue one two three This is what the back of Intarsia looks like. So at no point do you have the blue carrying over. So you've got a nice clean section of blue, a nice clean section of red, and another clean section of blue. So, and you end up with these really cool sort of ladder um, S climb ups. So if it goes that way here, it'll actually be bumping up. It's a bit like the knitting actually. It's a, a weave effect. This nest here that's all tangled up, you just untangle it when you weave the strand. It doesn't matter how long they are. <laughs> but you can only do that if you don't wrap it around a piece of card or one of the, around them one of the, around one of them bobbin makers. Um, this row is identical to the row below that's nice no thinking 
the row above's identical as well. <gasps> Two rows of just copy what you see. So easy. I love rows like this. It's like it's making an image and you're not even doing anything different. <laughs> I think I've said this before, but I didn't watch Star Wars when it came out. Um, I was obviously too young. When the new series, new 1, 2 and 3 came out, I was about 10 and I remember just sleeping through it because I, I weren't into it or I might have been younger so maybe I wasn't able to concentrate or maybe it's just that Jar Jar Binks was so boring <laughs> um, but I thought I'm, I should be into this based off what I like I like sci-fi I like fantasy um, I like heroes and villains and stuff like that so I thought I'm, I'm going to watch Star Wars and I'm going to enjoy it so um, me and my mum watched it together we liked it and then I said to her they're bringing out a new one <laughs> and it was uh, just as they were releasing episode uh, 7 that we'd watched the original trilogy and it was only because we'd got into it um, that I found out that they were making new ones and I like the new ones but maybe that's because I'm technically part of this new generation and not a part of the generation I was supposed to be part of. <laughs> so this is another copycat, copycat row. I like that copycat row rather than mirror row. I think it makes a bit more sense. So yeah, we might nick that as a terminology. I don't see anybody else doing Intarsia videos really. Uh, you've got your basic tutorials but they don't go in depth about knitting a full picture. At least what, not what I've seen. So this like breakdown of rows and what's happening on the back of the work and stuff like that, I really can't find any wordage that is like a standard for the um, technique. So I'm making it up. So in the 80s, if you look back and uh, find some vintage patterns, there are loads and loads of like um, images of things like Rupert the Bear and Paddington and Postman Pat and you know somebody obviously worked really hard and got the um, copyrights to publish those patterns, and they've just really gone out of uh, fashion. Huh? I don't see anybody knitting pictures anymore. Um, I'm all over Reddit. I'm all over Instagram. <laughs> and uh, it just seems to be me. So I'm like, well, I'll do it. I want to knit it. Okay, so this side's the same. And then the middle starts changing now. This middle gets really cool. It starts flaring out. So this is the same. Oh, just drop these stitches, I'll show you how I pick them up. Like that. <laughs> it's that easy. So I've just dropped them because this this ball of blue is getting tangled up with the nest and um, that just means I need to undo the nest a little bit to figure out why it's twisting around the blue. It probably means that I've been 
rotating my um, work the wrong way, so not clockwise and anti-clockwise and vice versa in each row. So I'm just undoing the nest. Oh, here's the, uh, the ball. Here's the main ball. That's the other main ball. Oh, sorry. Bumped you. I don't usually feel like I need to undo my main colours, but I did today. <laughs> Let's put the main ball on this side for a change. There we go. So, it's like I've got a nice fresh start. Okay, so these reds are the same. I wonder if there is wool in this. Because it does look half feel different than acrylic. And I was sure it was 100% acrylic. It doesn't really make a difference to me, to be honest. Um, it would just explain why it's acting a bit more grabby than acrylic does. I quite like a nice slippery yarn. No, it's 50% nylon, 45% acrylic, so maybe it's the nylon acting strange, but it's not half giving it a little bit more grab. This would be a good uh, yarn for socks because it's so soft. It's got the nylon in it. only ever made like one pair of socks and I'm never doing it again <laughs> okay so one less stitch of blue and we'll knit that with the red pull this knit one extra stitch of red say it's only nine o'clock and I've got so few rows left we're on the 30th row this is the 30th row I'm a bit surprised <laughs> this points the same like I knew this was the easiest chart but just to see in terms of time um, there aren't many charts that are going to be this easy to design and knit though because otherwise I could be like oh yeah I'll do loads of easy charts <laughs> really think of any other symbols that would be this easy I designed a sun and I've knitted it um, for a website and uh, it's not ready it's not been published yet uh, but the sun was surprisingly difficult because of all the little points in it and I was like you wouldn't have thought a round object would have been this difficult to knit Knit one extra blue at this point. Now we're knitting three reds. One, two, three. Switch to the blue. 
I'm determined to intarsia the whole of this image. So we're getting up to a point where there's a little bit of blue um, between the red. And sometimes I fair out that section. I'm not doing it this time. I am going to intarsia it. But this strand's getting rather short, so it's making me think I'd a new strand of yarn and use this for the points. Oh, we'll see. Seems a bit of a cop out though. If you've um, measured out three strands of blue for this middle section, you'd have enough knots to need an extra bobbin. Don't bother me though, I'm just going to add it in. Oh, the red's the same in the middle. And it's one less red there. Switch to the blue. Nick the blue. I'm sorry it keeps going out of focus. I, I have no idea. Pay attention, camera. Pay attention. Ah. <laughs> Lucy Ruler. This row's the same on the points. I'm going to call the circle bits points. I'm going to call the middle red bit the middle. <laughs> so yeah, this one's the same on the points. So let me just knit up to the red, change to red, entangle my red, knit three, change to blue. Knit one less stitch of blue. Definitely going to need a new strand of blue. One extra stitch of red in the middles on both sides. Switch to blue. I'm actually surprised how much blue I needed for that centre circle bit. Three. Three. Don't know why I thought that was wrong. I thought I was supposed to be decreasing on the edge, but I'm not. I am on the next row though. You see how the pitch is curling in. Stop and stitch does curl. It'll curl up at the bottom, it'll curl down on the top, and it'll curl under on the edges. And that's why if you're not knitting this and sewing it to something, you need to add garter stitch on the edges. So that's knit on like say if you were doing four stitches of garter stitch on the edge. You'd do stocking stitch and then you'd knit on the right side and then you'd turn around and you'd knit on the wrong side and you'd purl in the middle so it's stocking stitch again. And that's how you get garter stitch on the edge. Um, and that will stop your picture from curling. But if you're sewing it to another picture on all four edges, then you don't need to add a border. 
and that's why blankets are cool because you can just nip pictures without actually thinking about what you're doing on the edge great fun <laughs> Oh, yeah, I've only got two stitches of blue, so they'll be this blue stitch down the edge on both sides, and then the edge stitches become the seam, so they get sewn in. Uh, so it'll still look like there's two stitches of blue between each picture, but there's actually four stitches of blue in between each picture because two edge stitches become seams. We're on row 33, that means we're on the 11th row from the end. It's only 10 past, ten, uh, ten past 9. <laughs> 1, 2, 3. Okay, I'm debating weaving in a new end. One, two, because I've got like roughly a hand's worth of yarn. If I get to there, just thinking if I knit up to this point with the blue, well, it's not going to work. <laughs> it's not going to work. It won't reach. Let's try it. See how far I can get. I can always toggle back. There's no way. Right, so it, it was enough yarn to knit up to where I needed. But that is not enough yarn to weave in the end. Unless I was playing yarn chicken and really wanted to weave it in. But I don't want to, so... I like to weave in my yarn on the edges. So if I'm adding a new colour or a new strand I'll do it on the edge find a new piece of blue <laughs> what's going on there's the tail One, two, three. Okay, so I measured out three arm spans ish <laughs> of wool, which is miles too much for that middle section based on we only needed two to get up to where we've got up to in that middle blue bowl so I'm just splitting it in half I've literally folded the yarn in half and there's my two ends there's my other two ends okay so we're going to put the yarn over Knit one extra. There we go. So that's the end of that strand. And then I'm going to pick up my new one. And it's read the same point in the middle. So nothing different on either edge. Now I need to switch to this blue. This strand seems a bit longer than the other one. Um, I'm still going to add my other strand. <laughs> Ooh. Now this strand is in the right place where if I add it here I can use the tail and use it here and I kind of want to do it 
my other option for these blue stitches is to duplicate stitch them so I knit them in oh I might do that I kind of like that idea so I'd knit over these in red and that means I don't need to introduce a new strand of red where look at my um, strand plan so I was going to add a piece of red here and a new piece of red here and kill my existing piece here and the way it stands I could just knit in red all the way up and then duplicate stitch these eight stitches in blue so I'm just going to do that because it's easy this is why you need to know how to do both techniques because nice I don't know why I didn't think that when I was doing the strand plan. My brain was just like, it, you and Taz, you in this. <laughs> oh, one less stitch of red on this side. So one extra stitch of red should I say so there's my extra stitch and then I knit two and then one less stitch of red there switch back to this blue very good Well, that doesn't work why why has it done that and popped out of the flipping box stupid thing this is my only issue with um obs i can't play around with the image still popping out yeah of course it is of course it is so oh I know I figured it out you know what I always think oh I'm doing so well and then it'll just mess me up done Why does it do that? I think we're going to have to start looking at stitch numbers because it looks like you are going to break it. I've just proper closed the door on the cat. She's going to be fuming. Put OBS in there for a minute. Look for the chart. Okay. Good. <laughs> I just wanted to see the whole chat. What can I say? I didn't know it was going to mess up so bad. We're lucky it does this. <laughs> hmm. Okay, this row same on the points slightly altered in the middle Ugh. same on the points
know what, if I didn't want to include this new strand of blue, I could have used the edge blues and duplicate, uh, like, um, stranded over because of it being only three stitches. Could just about get away with it and not ruin my tension. I'm so bad at stranding. <laughs> okay, so one less stitch of blue. One more stitch of red. I think tomorrow I've been doing loads of work. And I'm, I am going to do the work. I'm trying to see if I can um, create written versions of my knitting patterns. Um, and I'm, I'm getting so close to being finished with this project. And afterwards, I'm going to set myself a limit. I'm going to tell myself to stop doing it at a reasonable time for once. So, five o'clock. Did I do one extra? Yes, I did. Just double check. Yes, I did. Um, and then I'm going to finish off my diamond art painting that I've had on my table for about a month. <laughs> and I might even at the weekend go and get it a canvas that I can staple it to. I see a lot of uh, people when they've got these diamond art paintings, they put them in frames and that's fine, but I do think canvases look better. Frames look better if they've got a, um, a mount, you know, the cardboard mounts in them. But this canvas is so big, uh, this diamond art painting is so big, I can't find a canvas that's a, a picture frame that's got a mount in it that's not extortionately priced. So, canvas just seems like the better solution to me. Okay, how much red do we have in the middle? Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Okay, so one less stitch of red here. So knit the red. Now change. I can't even find that red though. There it is. Change to red. Knit two, change to blue. All my tails are getting mixed in because <laughs> they're all next to each other. You just keep picking up a blue until you can pull a blue and it tightens that stitch and that's the right one. Okay, now we need to have six stitches of blue, so four five, six. So there should be two stitches of blue remaining. And then knit all the reds. I would have made this red a bit longer if I'd realized I was doing this trick in the middle. Knit two extra reds. Remember, I'm ignoring those blue stitches that you can see. We're going to go back and duplicate stitch them. One, two, change to blue. Once again, make sure you find the blue that you need. And then it's knit up to the reds on this left side. And then knit two reds. Change back to blue. Yes.
of this row the red jumps over one stitch so you knit up to the red you knit the red and then you knit two reds one Knit up to the red, knit one more in blue, change back to red, fluff, fluff, <laughs> I can feel it, I've got it, have I? How does fluff always end up on my face? I know I'm knitting. <laughs> I must be touching my face and not realising because I don't know how. And it always ends up like around my moustache. <laughs> This person said to me once, oh, you've, you've got something in your moustache. And I was like, piss off. <laughs> You're joking. I don't have a moustache. How dare you? <laughs> so rude. I knew what they meant. But it's not the point. Upper lip would have done. <laughs> hmm. Oh, one less stitch. Need to knit this blue stitch with red. One, two. Changed blue. tell you what I'm glad I measured out an extra strand of um, red on this side that's the original red and it's only just gonna make it to the top only just this red in the middle might not make it it's getting a bit close it's a good job I know how to duplicate stitch and then weaving my ends using duplicate stitch as well <laughs> okay the points are the same this time all the same it's copycat copycat and flipping air is still there going crazy and it up to the red be in focus camera thank you make one extra stitch of red now of blue knit one less stitch of red oh <laughs> look how sharp it is I'm gonna have to add new yarn anyway My original plan of um, splitting up the point where I was supposed to split definitely would have had enough wool. <laughs> where have I put my nips? Nippers. I can't find it. I'm just going to use my strength. Tell you what, that's not as easy as it flipping looks. <laughs> if I didn't make it, it would be easy though, did I? <laughs> it's also really bad for the wool because it makes the um, yarn thinner where you pull at it. So you're not supposed to do it. But I did. Ideally, I would have been able to knit this row. Oh, could I knit that row? I'm going to try. 
because uh, this is the row where the blue's getting added which is why I actually added the yarn in the middle Oh, sorry, Weezy. Hello. Hi. Is that enough to weave in? Hi. Probably, but I'm not going to do it. Are you having a nice time? I put your food downstairs. You get that good stuff, didn't you? You got the gourmet you got gourmet are you big big girl yes happy birthday baby girl you're so old you know what it could even be a cat hair It's driving me crazy. Okay, one less stitch of red than what I've knitted there. Switch to the blue. <laughs> red matches on this corner. Tell you what, she's doing the funniest thing. She's doing that thing where they're like cleaning themselves, but she's not. She's just got her feet in the air. <laughs> You've got nice toe beans. Okay. Wipe my face. <laughs> That's gone. Knit one extra red. I swear to God, the flipping hair's moving. And every time I feel it, I'm like, oh, I can get it. <laughs> I know where it is. It's tickling me. Apparently not. The cat's going mental. She's like, give me juice there. Give me this. Give me this. <laughs> you can't play with it. Don't eat it. She very rarely plays with the wool. So I don't know what's intrigued her about this particular strand. Okay, so we need to knit two extra strands of red, one extra strand, so this is stitch 18. Hey look, exactly where I stopped the yarn on the last row, that's annoying. It's only annoying because if I'd realised I could have left the long end on this side. I'm going to show you a trick because I think that's a great idea rather than knitting back so I can actually make the red longer on that side by pulling on the yarn yes Weedly give me this okay so this is the 
end of the long tail. So I'm going to pull it until it's short. This is just if you've made a goof and you want to go backwards without actually undoing your work. So just give that a pull until it's short. There we go, that's enough yarn for me to weave in. And then there's two sides to each stitch. I'm going to make a V like this. There is a piece of wool over the top, but you see a V. So if I've pulled this side, I now need to pull this leg. And that's what this one is. So that was the first leg, and this is the second leg. I should have used a different colour needle, but this one was the one that I picked up off the floor. <laughs> and there we go. So don't pull it too much. And then this is the second leg. The first leg on a different stitch. That's the second leg of the first stitch. This is the first leg of the second stitch. And you can do that until you get back to the yarn to where you want it. And this is actually dead good to know for when you have over tightened a stitch and you want to get some slack back. Um, like I'm obviously pulling back a lot of wool. <laughs> but like this is quite a tight looking stitch. So you could just pull it and get some looseness back. There we go. I'm actually dead pleased with where I've weaved in my ends. Okay, so let's go backwards. I need to sneeze now. I might mute it <laughs> while I sneeze. Whoa. Hi! Okay. So now you can see these are my two ends in the middle and it's exactly where I need to start using the red when I've finished using the blue. Oh, it's like you planned it like that. <laughs> Just to make sure that you've uh, got all the slackness out of these stitches. You know, make sure the tension's the same as... Um, the stitches around it. Tension just means make sure they look like they're the same size as the stitches around it. Three, four, five, and then there should be three stitches of red left. Because this stitch here will be duplicate stitched in blue, and then these two are the actual red stitches. So now I can switch over back to the blue. hair's back. It's driving me bonkers. It's probably why I needed to sneeze as well. You know what it is? It's this fake fur. <laughs> if I touch it and then I touch my face, that's where it's coming from, little fuzzies. It's not coming from the wool, I don't think. Feels different. the end in this blue. There we go. 
this stitch that looks a little bit strange it's just because it's got a piece of blue pointing through it there we go <laughs> fixed <laughs> Whoa. my arm not the ruler that's cool we've only got two stitches of red needed on this point now it's looking quite swish now I'm really pleased I don't think my plan of using this oh no it will work look how long that is amazing got plenty of wool to come back down this edge pleased with that I've already had an allergy tablet today. I can't have another one. <laughs> Take one of them ones that make you feel sleepy before bed. It's a plan. Okay, so row 39. And we've not got many more stitches in this edge to do. So that'll be less things to focus on knit one stitch of red knit that one look at that that's the original piece of red I've definitely got just enough to do the last stitch and weave it in I would not have been able to do too many more stitches that's usually the amount that I need to weave in so yeah just got away with it okay this middle section is the same I wish I hadn't rubbed my eyes just a second ago because now they're killing me. Ah. I always think I'm going to try and be like super to the point on my streams. I'm going to not deviate, I'm going to give you all the facts. And I just end up wittering on. <laughs> At this point, you need to make sure that you're thinking about how much wool you've got to come back in the opposite direction. So I'm supposed to change over to a different blue at that point. So the next row, the reds are on the blues, one in. I wonder if I could get my Camera's closer. It's like right in front of me. <laughs> hmm. Don't think that's what I like. Don't think so. Because you're going to think my knitting is like right underneath my arm. So I'm just trying to find somewhere where it's in frame all the time and that it stays in focus I don't think you can see as much from that point it was about in front of my face Knit that red, change to red, knit one. Hmm. 
No, one less blue. Got a bit of in red. It's like a little points. No, one more red. See what's gone on here this is a split stitch from the row below so I'm just gonna undo it there we go see how that stitch is split so just gonna okay so now it's back together and now I need to pull that yarn back through just gonna use my needle pull it from back to front and put it back on my left needle there you go didn't have to undo anything I didn't need to grab a crochet hook just dealt with it <laughs> this is the last stitch will it make it boom done finito Should just about have enough wool to um, sew it in. I could basically get away with this much yarn to sew in, like the tiniest, tiniest piece. I might not do a very secure job, <laughs> but I could get away with it. I um, like to weave my yarn tail ends into about two or three stitches so you don't need a lot you just need enough that you can actually get it through the uh, the point of the needle and pull it back on itself what's going on here Is it slacked? I'm a little bit confused. Oh well. It looks fine. So that was the 40th row. We've got four more rows to go. <laughs> and it's only red in the middle now, so we're just knitting straight over the blue. Uh, straight over with the blue, we're knitting over the red. Tighten that stitch up so it doesn't get on my nerves. Tighten that stitch up so it doesn't get on my nerves. And then it's one less stitch of red this time. One less stitch of red, switch back to blue. This strand of blue's got to make it back to the edge. The big bobbin of blue. So let's hope it does. So you need a bigger bobbin of blue on the left side. I'd maybe do three and a half on the left side and maybe do three on this side. Oh, switch to the red. <laughs> no, 
switch to the blue. Because if you're switching over, you th just think, oh, I'll grab the next shade. No, switch into a new shade of blue. <laughs> Okay, and then middle decreases, and then you've got a copycat row, and then the middle decreases. So I shouldn't need to pay attention to the chart. Let's go back to the regular view. Leave the ruler up for you. All these like loose looking bits where the um, it's just because that's where the tails end. They all get tightened up when you weave in the ends. Not anything you can do about them at the moment. Just knit over them. Try not to let the tension throw you off. Knit one in. Switch to red. Knit three, two, three to blue and it's nearly 10 o'clock where usually I'd finish a chart around 11 so and I started about an hour later <laughs> uh, because I finished knitting the other chart first so powered this one out I'm so pleased Danny's not even finished doing his raid <laughs> this is a copycat row I don't even need to move the ruler up but I will I will do it for you. I thought about knitting Wheatley on a jumper for her birthday. Not for her, just doing it because it was her birthday, but the chat I've got of Wheatley is so difficult. Like, she's my little icon, um, and that's on my website. <laughs> Um, and that one would be really easy to knit. It's only about 13 pixels high. But. We're doing Star Wars, aren't we? We're doing the Star Wars charts. Look at all them baggy ends. <laughs> okay. So then the last row is just one stitch of red in the middle. Which is good because this ball of blue is getting all untangled. Then we've got six rows of plain blue above the chart. Oh. One stitch of red. Back to blue. Mm. 
and that is the end of the 44th row of the chart. So I'm going to hide the ruler so we can just look at the chart on the screen. And then I'm just going to finish off knitting all the rows. Could cut all my yarns. Yeah, I'm just going to cut off that end of blue. I'm going to leave it long enough in case I want to use it to um, duplicate stitch. I don't think I do though. Where's my snips? <laughs> They've gone. Get these ones. Oh. That's the joy of being in the knitting room. Snips everywhere. Could do with the Republic sound effect, couldn't I? <laughs> right, hide that. Now we're just doing the six rows above the chart. I don't know how I picked six rows. I think it made the image square. Um, and it really doesn't matter as long as you pick a number and make sure they're all the same. So the blanket I'm knitting is about 15 patches I want to place that over there might make it look a bit more secure um, it's about 15 patches total um, it was 15 or 12 I remember having three um, two well three columns <laughs> and I think it was three columns five rows so once I'm done doing all the charts, I'll sew them together and I'll um, then either with a contrasting shade or with the same blue add a border. I usually do a 2x2 two two rib. I'm debating doing a rib, a, a garter stitch rib because I hate doing 2x2 two two rib and all my patterns use 2x2 two two rib because <laughs> it looks the best I just don't like knitting it I'm also debating whether I want to put a back on the blanket in the moment I'm thinking I am putting a back on the blanket I just think it'll make it last longer and it'll look better Like, yes, it's more work. If I can find a blue that matches this, um, just gonna sit down the sill, there we go. Then I think I'll just do a plain blue edge. But if I can't find a blue that matches, I might put a black backing on it. And then I can use black for the edges as well. <sighs> Just thought black, yellow and white around the edge of the blanket. Like Star Wars. Like, oh, not white. I don't know why I thought it had white in it. But if I did black, yellow and blue as the border... I might try it because I could do two rows of three rows of black two rows of blue uh, of yellow three rows of black 
I'm only moved to that six, seven, eight. Mm. I'll have to mock that up. I've not done a split border before. I might just be overcomplicating it. Ten o two. I sometimes consider doing these streams in my pajamas so that I can just go straight to bed afterwards. And that could phrase them as like bedtime knitting, duvet knitting, could be a thing. I just think would people think that I'm knitting a duvet, which I'm not. <laughs> um. Patches are dead good to knit in the evening. Just one a week. It's like this uh, blanket I'm doing, quite a few of the charts I'm expecting to take me to um, two evenings. So if I'm only doing one uh, stream a week, let's say the whole chart took me um, two streams, which is four hours per stream. That's 30 streams. And, you know, 30 days, there's 52 weeks in a year. So it's not taking you a full year. <laughs> but, you know, would you have sat there and powered out the full blanket in a month? You'd have probably burned yourself out if you're anything like me. And be like, I'm, I don't want to see another chart ever again where just breaking it up and just not committing yourself to doing the full thing in, at once and just be like every Thursday I will knit one of them charts with Emma and then you get a blanket at the end and you're like oh and the each one's got a great picture in it I just think it's great You know, and then if it's anything like this, this one didn't take me two evenings, it took me one. And it was really reasonably timed. You know, and then you can hang out with me, you can chit chat with me, or you can just watch whatever you want in the background. The chats are on the blog anyway. Yeah, I'm actually super pleased. I'm gonna sew in all these ends, show you how I'll fix that edge. <laughs> Can't believe I messed up right at the start. I'm actually knitting quite quickly now. Oh, I jinx myself. I've not noticed that my arm's hurting, which is good. Because I was a bit worried it was going to be killing me. I'm just going to tighten this stitch up. I think it's where I did that silly manoeuvre. So 
So there's a little bit of slack in it and I'm just going to move it over here so that the tension's even across the row. Do my pearl row. a great big line across my finger can you see that i wonder if it's from holding the needle i don't think so it is look what it's from it's from this maneuver <gasps> maybe oh, i don't seem to be as close to it now i don't know where that's from it doesn't hurt feel strange just that feels yeah, sorry, it feels a bit like a lump actually imagine if it's from knitting <laughs> knitting injuries sue myself for an accident at work I'm going to watch the video back and see if it appears or if it was there all along. It's alright, flipping red mark. <laughs> it's so strange. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good. Cast off. Get it down. I've had enough. I've had enough. <laughs> I'm just listening to what Danny's talking about and he's talking about generations playing well. <laughs> oh, he's talking about a legacy as well. <laughs> this game's 16 years old. things people are into compared to, you know, that people different. He tried to get me to play World of Warcraft and I was like, I don't get it. I don't get it. Why can't we just play Terraria? <laughs> I've not played video games for ages. I can't get my brain to do them. I, put, I tried playing Animal Crossing. And then I found a glitch that gave me all of the uh, monies, so I bought everything and now I didn't have any satisfaction from actually progressing in the game. So I kind of did myself in there. And every time I play a game now, I'm just like, I could be working. I could be doing some knitting. So I've not completed a game for ages. I need to go complete Hyrule Warriors. But I was rubbish at it. <laughs> it was so bad. I could not do the controls. I was like, just give me A and B. Why has it got like a multi-directional attack pad? Don't like. A, B and start. That's all I need. Okay, so just finish casting off. Oh, go on. So 
god. I'm so pleased. Just left the end fairly long. That's getting knotted. I don't know how this knot has appeared, but I don't want to tighten it. There we go. <laughs> Great. So that's the picture knitted. Woo! Aren't we all impressed? <laughs> so I could weave in all the blue ends. Where's my mistake? It's on this side. First, I'm going to show you how to get this red strand back to where. I made a blip. Might, I might zoom it in for you. And then I'll pull the camera closer to the knitting. Oh, I could have zoomed in. <laughs> I'm going to change the um, brightness down because I don't think you can see the red. <laughs> Cancel. Um... Look at me video editing live. Filter. So that was the saturation, which I think I can get away with turning down just a smidge. That's a bit better. It's just because the red's just so bright. <laughs> I think that's as close as we're going to get. Okay. So. Stay in focus, please, camera. Each stitch is a wave, and this yarn is a wave going in this direction. So I need to finish the wave first because otherwise I'll end up with a little hole. This little hole right there. You know, if I pulled the arm straight down, that hole would stay there forever. So I'm going to finish the, we the wave <laughs> just by going up like that. And that tightens that stitch up and completes the stitch. That's what it looks like from the front. So you can barely see it through if I pull it apart but you can't really so now I can go back down my image and I'm going to go down on this edge and you can see how there are these vertical lines so there there showing you the blue because the red doesn't want to pick up on the camera so there's a red one let me get my other needle there's a green one on the floor there we go. So there's a vertical line. So the blue ones lock into the reds, the reds lock into the blue, and they're going up like an S. So if I put the arm through those vertical lines, um, like so. I can weave it all the way back down to this point and it won't actually look like anything. You know, it's, there's no crossing over, there's no point where my little fingers can get caught in it. It's just nice and tidy. Where if I'd started here and carried my arm over, you would have had this strand like this which is not ideal. So this is just a nice inconspicuous way of carrying my arm down. And I don't have to do every stitch, I just think, why not? You know, instead of going into this red, I could go into that one. But I'm just going to go in through them all. I think this is the point where it's a mess. 
a myth. Yeah, you can go one with actually. Okay, so I know I need an extra stitch there. Is that it? Is that the only extra stitch I need? Well, that would be nice. Just compare to the other side. I think that might be it, which if it's only one stitch, that's really good. <laughs> because um, where did I want it? Right there. You know, as long it doesn't even matter if it's um, completely invisible, you know, um, symmetrical. No one's going to be looking through to make sure that I've completely mirrored up the sides. I just need to make sure it doesn't look strange at that point. Which, this is how you do a duplicate stitch. You go into the stitch underneath, right through the middle, and then you go into copy these two legs by going into the stitch above and across see now that legs there and now I need to pull this one down and that recreates the stitch it duplicates the stitch and that's a duplicate stitch and now if we look at the whole chart this side actually doesn't look that different from that side so I think I'll just leave it at the one stitch and not worry too much about if there's another stitch further down that was wrong because I think there was somewhere down here. I'm just going to leave it, it looks fine. <laughs> I'm dead pleased with that. So I'm just going to weave in this end. I know I've just carried it all the way down there, but I don't want this duplicate stitch to come undone. So, the way I weave in my ends is actually to use duplicate stitch on the back of the work. Reset that yarn. So, I'm just copying the, the wave pattern of these stitches. not see what I'm doing. I'm trying to make sure you're in frame, I'm in frame, and that I can lean on the table the way I like. Because this bit's it's just embroidery, it's sewing. So I like to have my elbows on the table. There we go. And then stick. So once I've weaved up and down three times, two or three times, four of them being really like overly cautious. Uh, if it was a baby blanket, I'd be doing four to five stitches because I'd be like, no, I do not want that coming undone. <laughs> but yeah, once I've done about three stitches, I leave a little tail when I snip it. I don't fully snip the back, um, just so that it's got less chance of flicking out. So. And that's how I do my weaving in. I know some people, when they weave in their ends, they do like just a diagonal line up and then come back down on themselves. I'm like, I don't know what you've done there. <laughs> how is that secure? <sighs> oh. I'll tell you what, I'm glad I've finished the knitting portion this chart. My brain needed to switch off. If I was doing a really complicated chart, I'd just leave the um, knitting on the needles and I'd weave into ends just halfway through.
Tell you what, these snips never work. I don't know why they're working today. I'm dead pleased though. <laughs> so the way I do my duplicate stitch is I'll weave my yarn into the colour that the yarn matches so I could have gone this way over the blue but then there's more chance that as the wool wriggles round you're going to see some of that colour popping through it's not a big deal but it's avoidable so it's like look at how much red there actually is in this picture you've got loads of room to be weaving in your ends into matching yarn and it just means the back looks just as neat as the front I don't mind if people see the back of my work my work's brilliant on the back I've done a blanket for a magazine this week and I've had to weave in these ends and I'm so pleased with the back I like went crazy with how neat I was with this particular chart um, when I do commissions for magazines you can ask to have the um, the knitted piece back when they've used the sample and I'll tell you what I can't wait to get this blanket back um, I'm really really excited for it this yarn I'm thinking probably needs to move in this direction like upwards up there but I kind of don't want to so I'm just going to go down <laughs> that's where the stitch is and you can see just you can just about see that there is a little nubbin of something poking through but I weaved it into red so it it disappears <laughs> you've you've got away with it I'm sorry if I slip out of frame at any point. This is a fun point. So this is the very last stitch. So the stitch is being weaved like this so I'm going to complete it by going up uh, it slipped to the front so you can see there it slipped to the front of the work which means it shows on the front of the work and you don't want that so undo it try and maneuver it it's not going to stay on the back of the work I don't think this one so instead of going up because it's not worth it to me I'm going to just loop it down into the side stitches and then I'm going to go across here because um, I don't think this hole is going to be as noticeable hole it's a loose bit of thread <laughs> it's a loose stitch uh, but I don't think that stitch will be as noticeable as if I put a great big line of red onto the front so just going to go down here like this I'll show you how I can, I'm going to hide that spot and then I'm going to go into the red and then up a stitch 
and it might keep coming out of the embroidery needle but you just thread it back through and then pull it up that'll do this is more like it there we go <laughs> so this piece of blue on this side I'm gonna weave it over the last stitch of red like this so it should stay on the back of the work just check yes it did just about looking at just move it get it tight mm, that'll do and then I'm gonna go up here and this will tighten up that stitch for me done I'll open extra one And there you go, that little loose stitch has disappeared. The front looks the same as it did before. If I've got two ends together I'll try and send them in opposite directions so this one might end up getting bumped up against the red but we'll see what happens um, and if they're not going in opposite directions I'll bring one of the arms underneath I don't weave ends into the same stitches because it just makes it super thick and that's not nice So, hello baby. Figure out where this piece of yarn is supposed to live. Hi! Hi! Hello! There we go. What are you doing? What are you doing? Cheeky. Jump up here on the bed. On the bed. Come on my knee. She's not a lap cat. She has never jumped on my knee. <laughs> I live in hope. Gotta go back under this. That was where I locked it in place. But I like to sometimes undo where I tethered it to just so I can see what it wants. You know, I can see the direction of my stitches and stuff. So I'm gonna go back through where I just have taken it out of and back in this direction over the blue stitches. It just lets me visualize the stitches better if I can see the hole that will be created. <laughs> um, like this one could do with being undone as well. Not really much of a stitch there to be worried about, but that's the direction it wants to go. See, if it comes undone, leave the needle passing through the stitch where you want the yarn thread the needle again and then pull it through and you can do that for a few stitches 
just threading it as you go and that's how you can get away with a tiny tiny end and you can still thread it into at least three stitches that one that end wasn't tiny <laughs> this end would be tiny and that would do three stitches the cat's proper <laughs> my doing me she's like come cuddle come cuddle I forgot I didn't do the blue up here, did I? I'm an idiot. <laughs> I didn't do Puckett Stitch the blue. Okay. Let's weave in these reds and then I'll grab that blue. I haven't actually weaved in any blues around this section yet, so it's fine. One. What? What's wrong? You're such a distraction. Can I help you? Oh, are you in a good mood? Yes, even though it's chucking it down. Yes. Ah, nice. I'll have to go downstairs. Throw a ball of yarn round for her. Oh, bless you. See if she wants to go out. I don't know why she's mithering me. It's chucking it down. <laughs> she's gone back and lay down. That's nice. Oh. Right, let's do something with this blue. I should have left that blue piece longer. Put that down like this. And then, so the duplicate stitches are this one, this one, this one, and this one. And I don't usually like duplicating on a stitch below one I've just duplicated, but on this occasion, I'm going to do it. Let's just look at it, it just looks so silly. <laughs> I don't know why. Not even done it yet. It's like, how does it know? <laughs> it's like, do I go under just the blue or do I go under the red and the blue? I'm going to go under the red and the blue because I was working in the opposite direction. Oh, it's awful. Yeah, it don't work. I don't recommend I'm going to have to do it the way we would use slightly more yarn if I need to weave in another end I'll weave in another end okay so I'm going two stitches down instead this time Across, down, up into that stitch I've just made, across, down, 
duplicate the stitch next to the first one cross down and then it's one underneath this one. Oh, I should have done it one down over oh I'll risk it I can always undo it let's go underneath just the blue got away with it look at that that's that's not too bad oh okay fine there's three stitches in between it's not long enough do not like find a big bit of blue I'm trying to find a waist end really but I can't find one that's probably long enough let's try it um, so I'm going to weave in the yarn first and that just means I don't have to weave in this end after I've done the duplicating okay one two three all right um, at least I'm going upwards this time we'll be able to compare the sides it's just so much easier duplicating on to the stitches above and at the side of the ones you've just done. Ta da! Wasn't that cool? <laughs> right, let's weave this in. Gotta go. Mm, up this one <laughs> need to weave this one in as well it really if I didn't want this piece of yarn going this way, because that's where I weaved my end in, I could have done what I've done with this piece and gone back in the same direction, like that. It doesn't make much of a difference. It does slightly annoy me. Might change it. I'm not gonna see the back though. Ugh. What do the back of my other ones look like? Not amazing. That's the back of the Death Star. Oh, it's still quite good though. <laughs> because this one's so simple, things like that stand out so I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna leave it yeah I'm not I'm not I'm not thrilled about it it's on the back Mm. 
Mm -mm. So close to the end now. Look, this is that end that I snapped instead of cut. Can you see how fuzzy it goes? Yeah, not great. <laughs> I just thought snapping it was better than biting it. That'll do. I did two on that one. One, two. Mm, don't like that. Don't know why, but that's the direction that piece of wool wanted to go. Move it in down here, and then I'm going to go across just into a couple of stitches. Is that it? <gasps> That's it. Apart from the last stitch that's come undone. How it came undone, I do not know. Very unusual. Yes, that's the back. There's the front. Let's try and make sure you can see it. Oh, not bad few hours work that. I'm really pleased. Oh. Once again, I don't know what we'll be knitting next week. <laughs> if I say something, I always pick a different chart. So think that will be the end of today's stream so next week seven o'clock six thirty we'll be doing a another Star Wars chart so that's GMT right here so I hope to see you all soon this will be up on YouTube as well for anybody who actually watches it <laughs> come over to Twitch and watch me live and hang out <laughs> See you later. Let's transition out. Bye, guys. <laughs> <laughs>